Hey gang, Tony in the studio today with a tip on custom camera settings. It's something that's on just about every modern DSLR, but you may not be using. Stick around to find out what they are. All right, now we're talking about custom camera settings. And if you're like me, you probably use your camera on manual mode most of the time. Some of you may be using aperture priority or shutter priority, whatever, but uh, I mainly shoot in manual mode because I wanna have full control over the camera and all of the settings and what it's doing. However, there are a couple of settings on here such as user presets, C1, C2, C3, and these allow you to set up the camera in a specific way and then quickly change between those presets to modify all of the settings that you previously set into each of those presets. It's something that I kind of found by accident when I was shooting with the 1DX Mark II. Uh, to shoot in 120 frames per second, you had to deep dive into the menu system to make that change. It wasn't a quick change like going from 24 frames per second to 30 frames per second. You actually had to dive through the menu system, it would slow me down. So if I'm happily shooting along at say 24 frames per second, wanted to jump into that super slow-mo, that sweet uh, 120 frames per second goodness, I had to dive down in through that menu. It would take me a minute to figure out which settings it was to make that change. It wasn't quick and by then I missed the shot or whatever it was I was trying to accomplish. Lo and behold, settings that are on all these modern DSLRs, the presets of C1, C2, C3, allow you to set up your camera a certain way and save that basically as a snapshot into that preset. So I did that for the 1DX Mark II, was able to just simply go from C1, which was set at 24 frames per second, to C2, which took me to 30 frames per second, or C3, which took me to 120 frames per second. So depending on what it was I was trying to film, I could very easily just change the mode of my camera, and boom, I didn't have to deep dive through those menu systems anymore. This can be extremely valuable uh, depending on what it is that you shoot or what type of camera you shoot. I'm talking to you, Sony users. The Sony menu system is absolutely It's the deep dive menu system from hell, clearly designed by engineers and not by uh, end users. That's one of the beauties of the Canon menu system is that it's the same on just about every Canon camera. Once you know it, you know it. With Sony, everything you do on a Sony camera is such a deep dive. It's I, I, The menu system is horrible. Sorry, Sony shooters. You're probably going to leave me hate mail for this, but I used to be a Sony shooter, so I can say that. Anyway... Um, what I found most useful on the Canon EOS R, the way that I'm using these presets is uh, I, you shoot with natural light a lot of times when I'm out shooting architecture, buildings, interiors, or whatever, which is 95% of my shooting. And I need to use exposure simulations so that I can see what happens as I roll my shutter or my aperture. I can see exactly how that's affecting my exposure. But when I come back into the studio and I need to shoot product, food, headshots, whatever, uh, it's gonna be pitch black if I'm using exposure simulation. So what I wanna be able to do is uh, basically turn that off and have the lens wide open so that I can see my composition and my focus in the studio, knowing that I'm relying on the strobe lights or the flashes to provide the actual light of the scene. So obviously that's not a what you see is what you get or a WYSIWYG view. When you're in an environment like that, you're gonna lose that when you turn off that exposure simulation. But to go from one to the other was again, a little bit of a dive into the menu system. So we simply set it up. C1 is set up with exposure simulation on so that I can, in basically all manual settings on the camera otherwise, so that I can be outside on location shooting with natural light. When we come back into the studio, we can jump into C2 camera setting, which basically sets it up for shooting with strobe. It turns off that exposure simulation. It changes my white balance to flash white balance and a few other little settings in there. And then we jump to C3, which is set up for video for us at 30 frames per second, which is what you're watching right now. So we have this set up to do that just very quickly with those user pre sets C1, C2, C3. Depending on the type of genre you're shooting, what camera you're shooting, or what settings you may change on a regular basis, uh, those settings can be very, very useful in shedding a lot of time off of fiddling around in a menu system, especially when you're in front of a client. So try them out if you haven't used them before. That's, that's uh, you know, we could dive a lot deeper into this, but for today, that's just the tip. All right, if you haven't subscribed to the channel yet, now's your time to do so. If you liked the video, little thumbs up. If you didn't like it, double tap that dislike button. And uh, if you haven't listened to the podcast yet, check it out over at pixelpunishers.com. And if you're so inclined, follow us on Instagram. 
that's it. I'm out. Later.